We are continuing with <clears throat> poems from a, of a mountain home from Sagio, Sagio Poetry with Bertrand Watson as the translator that comes out of. And we're on to, we got into autumn. We had a lot of seasons here and here this poem, it says, when I was paying my respects at Kashuga, the moon was even brighter than usual and I was moved to write this. So the moon was bright and he says, gazing at this moon over Makasa tonight. I know how he must have felt that man who looked far off. Now he says, who is that man? And the note says, Kasuga is a famous Shinto shrine at the foot of Mount Mikasa. And Nara Shegyo is recalling a poem by Abe no Nakamaro. An envoy to the Tang court in China during the Nara period. Abe wrote the poem in China in 752 when he was about to board a ship to return to Japan. I don't know, he says return to Japan. Was the guy Japanese or Chinese? Because he says here, Nakamaro, an envoy. Okay, so an envoy is uh, like an ambassador then, so he's Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. When he was able to, about to board a ship to return to China, the poem expresses his longing for his homeland. Okay, hey, mm. return to, no, I got it read it wrong. He was about to board a ship to return to Japan. The first time he said there's in Japan. Yes, Japan. He expresses his longing for his homeland, which is Japan, and is preserved in Kokinsu. All right, so this poem is in a old collection of the Kokinsu, and it says, I turn to look far off at the sky, the same moon that used to rise over Mount Mikasa and Kasuga. He says, a poem is especially poignant in view of the fact that after he had embarked for Japan, his ship was blown off course, far off course, and wrecked on the China coast. He made his way back to the Tang capital, but died there without ever returning to Japan. Mm. You know, I, I, this poem reminds me of, this guy reminds me of my great great grandfather George Merritt and my my great grandmother Flora Merritt wrote a poem about how see George was on a ship and the ship wrecked and he was stuck on an island of six months or six weeks or something and and he was shipwrecked. He, he, they lived in Jersey Isle. He, and the poem, I can't read the poem because I'm looking at the phone right now. It's on the phone, but I'm going to read it at some point. That's why I said I needed your phone because I can't, I don't have split screen. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyways, that's a poem by Flora Merritt, which talks about how he was shipwrecked. He actually came back, sort of, he made it back somehow. He waved the ship and got off the island and he, then he died though from exposure or something. Anyway, so it's similar to that poem. Now we come to the next autumn poem, Hearing Wild Geese at the Dawn. Is the one with the moon again? The moon again, I'm gonna read the two poems maybe. Mm -hmm. It says, gazing at this moon over Makasa tonight, I know how he must have felt that man who looked far off. And then the other guy's poem, whose name is Nakamaro, he says, I turn to look far off at the sky, 
the same moon that used to rise over Mount Mikasa and Kasuga. So, very good. <laughs> That's good for my great, great grandfather. The next poem says, Hearing Wild Geese at Dawn. As banked clouds are swept apart by the wind at dawn, the cry of the first wild geese winging over the mountain. So it says, As banked clouds are swept apart by the wind at dawn, comma, the cry of the first wild geese ringing over the mountain. It's in both collections, the K K S K S and the S K K S, then the Mountain Home Collection and the Shinko Kinsu. <laughs> the monk's poem, which we don't know if it had titles, the, the moon seen on a journey. I don't know if the translator added those titles. But here we have moon viewings in the capital when I thought such sad thoughts. Now I know they were no more than idle pastimes. Moon viewings, viewings in the capital when I thought such sad thoughts. Now I know they were no more than idle pastimes. Hmm. Moon viewing could mean uh, looking upon enlightenment or meditation. That you could say that they weren't working so well in the capital. I don't know what he means. Mm -hmm. That's why he remember he becomes a hermit and goes and lives in the woods. <laughs> This one, I'm not going to read the title. Wild geese departing. Their wings in white clouds call longingly to their friends in the patties outside my gate. It's very interesting. You know, geese tend to holler at each other, I think. <laughs> Wild geese departing, their wings in white clouds, call longingly to their friends in the paddies outside my gate. I remember hearing this one, right? The geese calling to the other geese. Yeah. Yeah. Talking to each other. <laughs> Autumn, when even without it, all things seem mournful. The sound of the stag's cry brings tears welling up. <coughs> Autumn, when even without it, all things seem mournful. The sound of the stag's cry brings tears welling up. In the little weeds that sprout in my wall, a cricket wails. He must be peeved at the dew that soaks the garden. <laughs> Goodness, you understand that one? In the little weeds that sprout in my wall, a cricket Wales, he must be peeved at the dew that soaks the garden. Mark it a close look. Well, all right, so maybe there's a cricket who's inside the, in his wall, and he's, he's press, peeved means he's angry at the dew that's in the garden, because he doesn't want to. Maybe he came in because it was wet out there. <laughs> now he's he living. He's living with nature, with crickets and with worms. And well, here he's he gazes at them. He looks at them. He's trying to interpret the 
the meaning how of the they, cricket. How they communicate. What the, he's trying to read what the cricket's saying. Mm -hmm. Well, he's saying he's peeved at the dew in the garden. Huh? I know. He's listening to this stuff. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have anything else to listen to. Oh, he does have things to do. It's just that Nature. he's in touch with uh, sounds. Excuse me, that's good if you're alone with your, with your, uh, your very keen, with your ears, with your eyes. He's living the quiet life. He's gonna, it's n there's, no, there's no total quiet. If it's quiet, you're going to hear crickets. You're going you're gonna to hear birds and whatever. It's never quiet mm -hmm. in nature. On the road with not a soul to keep me company. As evening falls, Katie did lift their voices and cheer me along. <laughs> On the road with not a soul to keep me company. As evening falls, Katie did slip their voices to and cheer me along. What are those? Katie did must be little bugs. Uh, they're Katie did. I don't think they're birds. I think they're like a cricket or something. Uh, that's a Katie did. A like locust. Uh, he goes away from the world because he wants to be alone, but then without a soul around him, he enjoys living the presence of little flies. Yeah, well, yeah, they, they, their bugs are in the evening. It's some bug gets bit, they make a lot of noise. Exactly. But and he's on. Me, he's me. not alone. He's on the road, traveling. But and then, without a soul, he said alone. Of course, there's not a soul. He's traveling alone, and then he That's hears. Good. Yeah, it's these lonely, sounds. Lonely. Actually, it says here. What's it say? For the first phrase, I follow the reading, and the, the insect is called a kutsuwamushi, or horse bit bug. Because its cry suggests the sound of a bit in a horse's mouth. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hence the traveler in the poem feels as though he has company on the road. All right, so if the bug sounds like the bit in a horse's mouth, he thinks he has fellow travelers. From the bug sound, in other words, it sounds like the bit sound in a horse's mouth. You know, I'll read it again. Yeah. On the road with not a soul to keep me company as evening falls, Katie dids lift their voices and cheer me along. And these Katie dids are Kutsu Mushis. Horse bit bug. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a bug in Japan, of course. And next poem, so deep into autumn, their fellow flowers are all gone. The frost would only hold off and leave me the incomparable chrysanthemums. <laughs> He wants some flowers left, I think. Mm -hmm. So deep into autumn, their fellow flowers are all gone. If only the frost would only hold off and leave me the incomparable chrysanthemums. Which are the latest flowers that sent me. Aren't they the same as Effie just picked? No, no. no. Chrysanthemums are winter flowers. Uh, all right, all right. About autumn. Autumn. Right, okay, we out. finished on page 80. We're still in autumn. We are reading from uh, Segio, a 12th century poet from Japan. And he... I guess uh, one way for people to appreciate nature mm. is to, to just be alone in nature also. Mm. That's what our politicians live with, 
ਹੈ ਡਰੈਕਟਿੰਗ ਕਰੇ ਲੈ